G'day, I'm Nathan Bors. I'm a naturopath and entrepreneur, love doing business and having the pleasure of being on the online prosperity show with Prosper. You can expect some pretty cool stuff. We are looking at uh, weight loss programs. We're looking at food industry, property, a whole bunch of different businesses and how you can apply systems, tools and techniques to your business and skyrocket your marketing and sales. Hope to see you there very soon. Now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. I'm your host, Prosper Tarovinga. And today, we have a guest who is a true jack of all trades and a master of, well, pretty much everything he touches, all right? From naturopathy to real estate, restaurants, food manufacturing, and now he's revolutionizing the hotel industry with weight loss programs and also helping wellness coaches and consultants to actually create a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, Nathan, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. Lovely to be here. Lovely to be on your amazing podcast. Absolutely. Well, the pleasure is all mine. I can't wait to untangle all the beats that have brought you to this day and as you share your journey with us today. Now, for those that are watching right now, I think this episode just promises to be packed with insights, humor, and some truly game-changing strategies for business growth because Nathan um, has seen it all, been there, done that, and he's actually a celebrity in his own right. He's going to be telling you a little bit about that as we go along. So get ready to be inspired by Nathan's incredible story and learn how you too can scale your ventures to new heights. Now, Nathan, I've already introduced um, you to the show, and I think people are dying to hear your side of the story. Tell us a little bit about your journey so far and what it is that you're working on, or who is Nathan about? <laughs> Thank you. So my background originally is as a naturopath, and I did that for many years, probably close to 10 years. And that was a combination of uh, consulting as a, a practitioner in, in clinical practice and also I set up a, a bunch of pharmacies in uh, to have naturopaths and practitioners consulting from pharmacies in Perth, probably the first ones to do that in w Western Australia. Uh, so we set that up and then um, I realised that I wasn't able to leverage my time as much as I wanted to back then. Being in consultations, being in uh, one-on-ones with with uh, my my uh, customers and and patients, I found that that was very limited. You only have X amount of hours in the day, and I, I worked that out pretty quickly that we could only reach a certain level. And for me, I've always been driven with um, in the financial side to to try and get some growth in everything that I do. So I went from consulting to setting up a couple of different clinics and then I needed to leverage that further. So I set up a health shop, opened a health shop and that went particularly well. And then I set up another one and then a third one. So we got to three health shops, consulting for um, a chains of pharmacies in Western Australia and then realised that I needed to scale it to the next level and it was all about creating supplements so i created a very small supplement range which i sold in my health shops and then further field in western australia then nationally across australia so each time i've sort of been there and done that it's all about how can i scale how can i leverage my time better and better than um than just having capacity we always always found in the past that i'm the one that holds myself back and that we're always trying to look for ways, methods, systems, processes, products, whatever you can to scale a business more significantly. So that's my background in health. And then from there, I uh, uh, sold up everything. Um, I got to the point where I was like, I'm doing the same thing over and over again. I need some variety in my life. And I got, I think it was a seven year itch. And I, uh, decided that I needed to try new things. And at that stage, I was 
getting involved in some property in the UK and went over there to do that full time. And then that was challenging in itself because that was when in 2010 when the financial crisis um, hit and all the plans of borrowing money from the bank disappeared and we had to look for other alternative ways to scale a property business. And funny enough, we found a, an Australian guy and brought his concepts to the UK, uh, leveraging um, through something called instalment contracts and lease options, and uh, we're able to grow uh, a good size property portfolio utilising none of our own money, which was quite cool. So we did that for a, uh, a few years. My daughter was born and we realised that London was no place for a little person, so we came back to Australia and there I thought, time for a change. We need to set up something else. My family's in food, so we created a brand called Tommy Sugo, which creates uh, beautiful gourmet pastas in Perth, Western Australia, and we do all sorts of um, angles on that product. So we have, we've done restaurants, we've done uh, three rest restaurants, we do home delivery, we do fundraising, we do wholesale, we do catering, and we do retail and pop-up shops. So we have a lot of different angles that, that are going on. And the reason I bring this up is just because when you're in business, it's fantastic if you can look for utilising as many different um, ways of getting your product out there as, as possible. So you can be generating income from thinking outside of the box, utilising the same product, but but hitting it from... 10 different angles. So that's a bit about me and where I am now currently. And then, sorry, one other thing is obviously uh, I love business. So we're, um, I created another startup business uh, in uh, mid, mid last year and I saw a, a huge opportunity in the wellness industry, getting back into that again and bringing it to hotels around the world um, through a weight loss program. So that's currently where we're at up to date. <laughs> absolutely absolutely and uh what a journey i mean obviously coming in from perth western australia all the way to london and back home again and now we're going at it um in you know in in different ways i've noticed the theme in the things that you're doing it's usually people centered all right um whether it's from the health aspect of really um getting people well and um, from there, you went into the wealth building sort of sector that's creating accommodation and housing for people. And now you're back into the wellness side of things and it's back to people again. Some people would have, um, you know, you know, there's different types of people. Some people are very people centric. Some people are very animal centric and some people are very technologically centric. Now, is it something that you would have noticed in all these startups and everything else that you've always been doing that's a good question because it's uh yeah i love people uh, it, it's fun i mean you know we, one of with my team we've got a small team of about 12 of us and everything has to be fun if it if we get bored if i get bored then um then yeah, we don't we don't continue down that line for very long. You've got to be passionate. You've got to love what you do. If you if you don't absolutely jump out of bed, find something that you do jump out of bed for, um, or someone that you do jump into into bed for. No, hang on, that's a different subject. So um, what we want to do is just yeah, be passionate. And and what I always find is the opportunities are. Uh, endless i mean there is ridiculous amounts of opportunity in everything you look at it's just a, about the mindset you know just just feeling if you're going to be customer centric then what are the opportunity how can we better serve people what can we do that that doesn't just deliver mediocrity we've got to go 10 steps above that it's got to be blowing people away by exceeding expectations and and that's in everything that i any business that i run is it's got to have a totally unique uh, proposition that we can we can util, utilize a, a unique usp that we can reach out to people with and just blow them away because 
mediocre mediocre offers just don't work. You, you need something to connect with people. There's so much noise out there. There's so much interference. There's so much marketing being thrown at people, messages every single day. Unless we've got something that really, really stands out, then I don't want to do it. You know, there's, otherwise you're just pushing, pushing, pushing so hard and you'll get nowhere. So I think, I think just customizing some a unique aspect that's just mind blowing is just really, really, you know, the the, the way of fast tracking your growth in in sales and business, and that's what I try and look to. So that that's what I'm for any business that I'm involved in. Absolutely, I quite like that. And um, in all the businesses that you've been involved in, you've been a pioneer. You know, you started uh the 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 pharmaceutical consulting and you were one of the first people to do that like you said in in western australia um and also you then pioneered your supplements and now you're pioneering this um weight loss programs in the hotels and things of that nature what ends up being the drive as in what, what what is the thing that keeps you really going because some people would have just been like oh this is really good i'll stick with this and that's that's me yeah i think seeing potential in things is is my problem <laughs> so um being able to you know see an opportunity and there, there, as i say there's just opportunity everywhere for for people who who think gets rode in and stuck in a particular rut in their life, um, if you are able to just pull back a little bit and and see, well, where is the opportunity? And I think it starts with asking yourself the right question. Um, you know, they, they say the, the results that you get out of your life are directly proportionate to the questions that you ask yourself and and of life so the quality of the question determines your outcome so if we ask the right stuff um then we'll get the right answer if you don't write the, if you don't ask the right question you you're going to get no answer or the wrong answer or an irrelevant answer so that's sort of what's what i do is always look for those opportunities there's so many opportunities out there um I love tech. I love bring, involving technology as well into what we're doing to leverage and scale um, automations and um, and even starting to think like there's so much AI out there now. Artificial intelligence is is phenomenal, and it's it's allowed me to scale so many aspects of my business. Uh, there's a lot of fear around AI, um, and I think it's just really a question of getting an understanding of it. And why not utilize these tools that we have at our disposal, a lot of them completely free. So these have allowed me to really, really scale really, really quickly. Uh, a lot of people are sort of negative on the whole AI because they think it's going to reduce jobs, et cetera. What I found in my business is my businesses is that I've hired a whole bunch more people to utilize AI to scale more significantly, quicker, faster, more efficiently, um, more productively. So um, we, we've got to use these tools that are at, at our disposal um, and, and embrace them rather than being scared about them. Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, and so many people, you know, they're just holding on to a world that probably no longer exists um, because even if AI is not necessarily the generative parts that we're using, I think as of today, Apple has actually started partnering with these AI companies. So everything that we're now utilizing is automatically artificially intelligence, um, you know, generated. So, you know, <laughs> people might as well get started on on that wagon. Now, you've you've actually scaled multiple businesses across various industries, as you have said that, you know, whatever it is, you know, that suits your fancy at that particular uh, moment. What's one sort of uncommon strategy that you think has been common in whatever you've been doing that could actually benefit, um, you know, a, a small to medium business owner in order for them to then be able to scale their business as all? Well? Because like you say, you see opportunity, but you can't train somebody to see 
opportunity or maybe when an opportunity comes you get goosebumps you can't tell somebody hey you get goosebumps you know it just doesn't work <laughs> like that so what, what is there is there something that you utilize or use that is readily available for um everyday business person as well it comes back to those question aren't asking yourself as well again so it's you know, the most effective way I find of creating those dynamic opportunities of uniqueness and um, is is asking yourself the right question. So, uh, for example, I was, okay, I was July last year, I was in Thailand staying in a lovely hotel and I was with my family and I, I eat keto. So funny enough, I have a, a pasta uh, manufacturing business and uh, and and I eat keto, so life's a balance. So I, I I love keto. We were in this hotel. It has you know all these beautiful meals and food, uh, gourmet buffets for breakfast, etc. But I was able to be completely content eating keto while sitting right next to you know nine of my family members. <laughs> who were just shoving their face with all sorts of crap. Um, and, and, uh, and, and I was happy in my little world and they were happy in their little world. So it, it occurred to me that I was having a fantastic holiday and um, I was enjoying what I enjoy most. Uh, and the hotel was just brilliant because it had great food that, that could sustain keto eating and healthy eating. It had all the exercise equipment under the sun. It had a beautiful gym and swimming pools and walking trails and kayaking and all sorts of things. And it had great accommodation for sleep, which is such an important part of your health and well-being. So I said, looking at this, I was just going, this is unbelievable. Like, why is this not a package? So I started asking myself, well, how could we create a business out of this? Because this is just this has got all the fun foundations there already. It's all there. What, what do I have to do? And again, just asking the questions, what do I have to do? How can I do it? What is our unique selling proposition? How can we do this that leverages a, an amazing hotel, which already has huge amounts of traffic, already has huge amounts of um, great marketing budget? How can I tap into that and make something that I know a lot about, which is the health and wellness industry and weight loss, and bring those two worlds together. So then I just started asking myself, well, maybe I need to chat to someone or who should I talk to? And I thought, oh, well, it's general manager. And so I went and set up a meeting with the general manager of the hotel. And I said, can you make me for breakfast tomorrow? And I want to run something by you. Um, and I said, do you have any anything in the weight loss or the wellness industry? And he said, you know, ears sort of pricked up because all the hotels want to get into that sector because it's hugely um, rewarding. You know, it's a very lucrative industry to be in. And he said, well, no, we don't have anything. And I said, well, look, I've been doing weight loss for 20 years in clinical practice and running a program with amazing results. Why don't we bring that across? Because I'm sort of here on holidays and still doing it. So it's super easy to do. And, uh, said, yeah, we would love, love to have a chat to you about that. So, so I think it starts there at how can I, how do I, who do I speak to, just asking those questions to move forwards because, again, the quality of your life is determined by the quality of the questions that you ask yourself. So your bank account is determined by the quality of the questions that you ask. So if your bank account's not reflecting a good question, then maybe it's time to change a couple of those questions that you're asking. I like that, you know, because we get paid in direct proportion to the value we bring to the marketplace. And you have created value based on your experience with health and wellness and looking at, you know, a missed opportunity when it comes to hotels. And I'm actually just thinking of how that actually works because there's now this whole big competition between hotels and Airbnb. And if hotels are bringing in such a unique 
offering, then they become attractive once again, because most of the people that are actually traveling, yes, they might want to engage with the locals, but also not at the expense of their health. So, you know, it could be something that, um, you know, people could take on, but I don't think that would work for cruises though, because when somebody is <laughs> somebody's on a cruise, they really just want to mind your mind. Yeah, it's <laughs> totally. totally. Yeah. And that's, that comes down to knowing your market and, 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 you know, that's an essential part of business. You want to go where those hungry people are. So don't create your own uh, database of people. God, that's hard work. You know, go where those people are already hungry. They're already actively seeking your services, you know, on a rainy day, be the provider that provides the, the raincoats and the umbrellas. Uh, so, it just makes the journey so much more easy if you're if you've got what the hungry people want. Absolutely, because mm. a limited stent in a desert would sell, you know, other than you trying to do that in a busy shopping mall where there's so much yeah. competition in there. Right. But with all of this, I mean, the work that you've done and put it all together, you have mentioned you've um, you're hiring teams to utilize AI in order for you to be uh, obviously omnipresent and to create such tremendous value and be ahead of the curve all the time. This brings us to the topic of outsourcing, which maybe a lot of people are really talking about this, you know, day and age. And um, it, I was just reminded about that by you being in Thailand, which is such a big uh, outsourcing hub, you know, especially in the tech space for those people that are uh, looking and, you know, how have you effectively used this to obviously increase the in-house skills that you now have and maybe in minimizing costs along the way? 100%. I mean, outsourcing is a big part of, of what we do. It allows us to bring in the, the skill set that allows us to get the growth and to get the le level of coverage within the team that we need to really be able to scale our business. Um, based on look, based on Australian wages, wage costs, it's pretty hard for businesses to grow, uh, to have all the people that they need, to have the skill set that they need in-house and, and to not have massive wage costs that are just prohibitive to growth. So, you know, when you start outsourcing, and we do, we, we have team members in uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, uh, Philippines, and uh, India, and, and they're fantastic. They're, you know, they're, people sort of get a bit concerned about outsourcing, but there's good and bad everywhere. It doesn't matter, local or overseas. You, you come across good and bad team members regardless. Um, I think the recruitment process over the years has really, for me, has just totally changed. And, and we've got a very formulaic system now for recruiting and putting team members through particular tests and a whole combination of voice uh, voice tests, um, common sense tests, uh, IQ tests, a whole lot of different testing that we do before they we even speak to them. So it saves a, a lot of time. Uh, but that outsourcing it just it gives you another whole element, a level of of growth opportunities at a reasonable price. So and and they're great people. I I love our team. You know, I think they're absolutely awesome, and they're motivated, and um, they do need. It's interesting. A lot of the overseas uh, mindsets are a little bit different to our Western mindsets. So they do need a little bit of pruning, a little bit of steering in the right direction. Um, but, uh, but yeah, once, once we do, we, we, we put together an awesome team and we do a lot of social media marketing, SEO, um, graphic design work, lead generation, a whole bunch of different skill sets that we've brought together that, that really help grow our business, which we need. Absolutely. And um, I think, you know, if you want to go far, you go alone. But if you want to go further, you literally have to go together. And bringing in a talent pool from different spaces and places gives you diverse uh, insights that you would have never thought possible, especially when you're innovating and being a pioneer like 
you are being, you know, at the forefront of, um, you know, the innovations that you're coming up with. Now, one of the things that you mentioned was it, it's it's a low cost. And um, I would like to think that when you're running a business, one of the biggest costs is client acquisition. And maybe these days it comes in the form of maybe ads, ad spend and things of that nature, which then deters a lot of people from getting started because then they don't really know how to get started. But you seem to be doing most of the stuff organically, which seems to be one thing that is overlooked by a lot of people. And uh, maybe it's because you've got a team that can you can, you know, deploy and they can organically work for you. Can you share maybe some of your successful organic outreach strategies that you've been using that are literally spearheading the work that you're doing yeah we put a lot of time into seo so we've got um a bunch of team members that just solely work on seo and i love seo because it's just such an organic um process where customers come to you which is very very exciting when they're lining up and 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 they're coming to you so seo is a big component the other aspect that we do a lot of is direct marketing, um, so direct messaging. So we'll do, and and I, I actually don't do any paid advertising. I probably should, but I don't. Um, <laughs> so uh, so all, all our work is more paying wages rather than paying adverts. And I just, that, that's what resonates with me a little bit more than the paid thing, but I know both are absolutely fantastic. So if, if it's done right. So we do a lot of direct messaging. We do a lot of emailing. We get we scrape uh, email lists of hotels, et cetera, around the world, and we reach out to them directly. Uh, we do video creation, so through YouTube, and and we share videos when we're direct messaging our um our our future business partners etc and we utilize pretty much all channels so linkedin facebook and instagram and there's you know some amazing opportunities that are free and usable for for direct messaging so take facebook for example we do a lot on that within facebook groups now what i was talking about before when you've got hungry people that are passionate about what you do, it's so much easier just to go to them than trying to bring in lots of random people and then sort out the ones that are interested in what you've got to offer. <laughs> so Facebook groups are fantastic because there's a Facebook group on everything. Uh, so you need to find your niche and then niche down and then niche down further and, and then find a group that does exactly that. that. So, for example, if you're running... I don't know what's an example, um, weight loss programs for Labrador dogs. I don't know. There's probably a Facebook group out there for that. <laughs> so all your customers are somewhere. You've just got to look for where they are. Where do those hungry people hang out? And and then we, we go to those. We go to the Facebook groups and then we just reach out to them. We, we reach out utilising organic um, direct messaging we do a lot of automation as well. So we'll set up little automation bots that just send out messages and um, we have to be compliant with Facebook in terms and conditions. They, they like, like to uh, kick you off pretty quickly otherwise. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so they're our main channels of, of outreach and uh, direct marketing and through, through social medias. Absolutely. I don't know if you saw me there. I was trying to high five you oh, was... <laughs> when you when you mentioned, you know, you you veer or stay clear of ads because with ads, it's just literally uh, feeding into the trust funds of the the ones that own those platforms. Instead, you actually said you are helping your team members have a happier existence by providing them with well to do life. So I find that. Uh, amicable in and of itself because so many people would either choose to do you know maybe the easiest route which is just maybe pay for ads but it's um yeah it, it just depends on where your values sort of lie and things of that nature but if you do it well like you say it is something that pays off 
uh, in the end. This is something that you're now helping people with, right? So because some people will be like, oh, you know, I don't think I'll be able to manage this on my own. How can I be able to, you know, compete in such, um, you know, a competitive environment and things of that nature? Yeah, for sure. Well, we've, we've started working. Look, I love business of any sort, you know, variety, flavor. I don't mind. And uh, and and growth. Growth and, and is a big passion of mine because in the past, I haven't had a clue. Like starting as a naturopath, you're just not trained in any of these basic marketing strategies, you know, and I've, I've had to learn the hard way and I've, I've opened up restaurants. I've lost tens of thousands of dollars a month. I've tried it all. And, and what I, what I do know is that you've got to, you know, you've got to market yourself effectively. Otherwise you, where are your customers going to come from? And as far as I'm concerned, there is nothing in business, nothing more important than your next lead. Yeah. You know, if you don't have, customers steady flow of customers coming in what are you doing you know get out of business if you don't have a skill set or the ability to bring people in you're gonna suffer it's gonna be business is not meant to be hard it's, or it shouldn't be hard if, if you adopt the right skill set so you know there's nothing more important than sales and marketing like literally nothing in business it, it doesn't even matter to the degree of of being good as a practitioner. And I know that's probably quite offensive to a lot of people, but the reality is there's a lot of bad practitioners out there that market themselves really well. And same with every business. McDonald's does not have the best burgers. I hope this doesn't come as a shock to too many of you, but they don't actually have the best burgers. But what they do have is a phenomenal marketing system and a huge marketing budget so i think it's it's really important to start thinking outside of the box a little bit um particularly in the health and wellness space because we are just not trained in sales and marketing you know I, i've literally spent i hate to think so how much hundreds of thousands of dollars though it would be up there in educating myself in sales and marketing courses and there's no limit. I, I'll never stop spending on that because any little additional tip and trick that I pick up along the way is is going to grow my business and infinitely. So a- anything like that is scalable. So w- yeah, what we've started doing is literally just helping people, um, and and we don't we don't get paid for it. <laughs> we my business partner in Tommy Sugo and myself. We'll just have chats with people like they'll come to us and say, oh, what can I do to grow? And then we'll have a half an hour chat and we'll go through everything and we'll just point them in the right direction. So love doing that. I'm a business nerd when it comes to that sort of stuff. So anyone who ever wants to reach out, by all means do. And and there's no obligation. We just sort of get a bit of a kick. It's a little bit weird, I know. Get a bit of a kick out of um, helping people point them in the right direction think outside of the box absolutely 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 and uh i'll definitely put the details um you know where where can people reach out to get this uh marketing help yeah look if if anyone wants some help love love to have a chat about it um we you can get me on linkedin nathan boars and literally just started maybe two weeks ago, a little Facebook group. Uh, I don't think we've got anyone on it at the moment. I haven't even launched it um, called a Business Profit Lab. Um, so you can reach out in either of those, LinkedIn or Business Profit Lab. And we're just going to be helping people. At, we, we don't have a way of monetizing it. It's, it's literally just a, a kind of a service that we, this is how we, this is, I don't go out on a Friday night. I just do this sort of stuff. <laughs> absolutely i'll definitely make sure that those links are in the show notes and then uh people can actually get started uh to work with you maybe from there you could also learn what what else is happening out there and they can also learn how to actually scale their business i think it's a that's a perfect uh exchange right there so thank you so much sure. for doing that now nathan you did say 
you know, the burgers are not good at McDonald's. And and you're right. Because the, the beggars are better at Hungry Jacks. <laughs> well put. You know, <laughs> so so I can I can I can concur with that one, and I think the market <laughs> has decided. So it's one of those things. And speaking of, um, obviously being on a bigger stage, you've been on Shark Tank. Um, yeah. yeah. Can you share a little bit about that experience and any sort of lasting impact it has had on your business approach? It's been awesome. Shark Tank's been absolutely terrific for getting our brand out there. I mean, for the Tommy Sugo brand, um, we're in front of about 50,000 people a week anyway with our marketing and our pop-ups. Uh, so we're pretty active. But Shark Tank was amazing. We A uh, funny story about that, actually. We I was in Malaysia at the time that Shark Tank came around. They were doing a national tour and just recruiting, you know, people for the show. And I was in Malaysia. I was actually trying to pitch Tommy Sugo over there because uh, we were working with some some people in the restaurant industry over there. And I heard that Shark Tank had it was coming in Perth while I was away. So I sent them an email and said, look, I'm away, but how about I just do a pitch and, you know, sort of film myself um, at home doing a pitch, can I send it to you? Would you review it if I did that? Because I'd love to be on the show. Uh, and they said, oh, yeah, okay, we can do that. So I sent the pitch in and they said, got your pitch. Why don't you come to Melbourne and pitch for real? Because, uh, you know, by the time you get back to Perth, we'll be in Melbourne. So I said, yeah, let's do it. So I jumped on a plane, went over to Melbourne, did the pitch. Two weeks later, they said, yeah, come on the show, which was fantastic. And went on the show with my brother-in-law who at the time was also involved in in the Tommy Sugo business and we did the pitch Janine Ellis from Boost Juice uh, said yes to us and if you have a look on Shark Tank Tommy Sugo it's pretty funny and um, but it was good it was a great experience and Shark Tank can either make you look totally crap and terrible or they can give you a reasonable edit and for whatever reason, they decided to give us a reasonable edit and because some of the other people were just totally crucified on the show at the same night. And uh, so it was fantastic. Every time, and they ran, um, you know, reruns, and every time they ran reruns, our restaurants would get packed and it was just like a, a gift that kept giving. So it was it was a fantastic way. And the, the whole reason I did it was for, you know, exposure. So mm. that's uh, and it worked really, really well for that. Got our brand out there. Worked absolutely, well. absolutely. Would you recommend that to to anyone who is obviously looking to be in the national sort of space? Because those shows, um, you know, once it's out, you can't take it back. Yeah, it's great. You've got to know your numbers. That's one thing that. Uh, that, that is absolutely essential, you know, your, your GPs and your, all, all your numbers for your business, which you should know anyway. And um, But that, they'll quiz you on those and they want to know, you know, that it's profitable, et cetera. So, uh, but it's fantastic. Yeah, well recommend for everyone who, who wants to expose their, get their business out there. And, you know, it's an essential part of marketing to do that. Absolutely. Well, you know, maybe one day when you see me on there, just, uh, you know, <laughs> raise a glass. Or... Know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> <For sure. laughs> Fantastic. Now, I mean, obviously you've taken us on a journey, Nathan, and um, it's it's been, you know, exciting to just learn a little bit about yourself and who you are and who you've become. Now, the one thing that you actually said was, you know, you started off as a natural path and in that space, you didn't know what marketing was all about and what your business would have turned out to be and everything else like that. Now, now if you are reflecting on your own sort of journey, what sort of advice would you give to your younger self that's studying out in the business world, um, knowing what you know now? Definitely to, to, to learn how to market your business. Most important thing you can possibly do, like how do you acquire customers? So 
know how to market your business as your number one priority. So get good at something. It doesn't matter what, what it is, but find a lead generation, find a, a way of bringing those customers in on a regular, consistent basis. And there's thousands of different ways. You don't have to do all of them, but knowing how to turn on that tap, how to bring those customers flowing through the door is is just probably the most important thing in business as far as I, I can ever say. You know, the sales and marketing aspect doesn't get taught, but it's probably the most important thing you can do for yourself. Best investment you can make. Absolutely. And like you said, I mean, if you're not communicating or you're not um, talking to people, then what 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 good is your business if you're just shouting into a void? And I think um, that is some really, really good advice. Now, knowing what you know, uh, obviously, some of this stuff, you have had to learn it from mentors or reading or uh, just coming across it as experience um, from, um, you know, all walks, of, all walks of life. Now, I read somewhere that um, you had a run in with Robert Kiyosaki. Or is his methodology what you have used to inform your business, you know, rich dad, poor dad and things of that nature? Right, right. Uh, uh, look, yes, him and and there's a whole bunch of guys that uh, that I've done workshops with, and Anthony Robbins and uh, Brad Sugars and Rick Otten, and there's just a bunch of guys that that you get little bits of information. And and the way I see it, look, even if I walk out with one thing that's usable from a seminar or a a weekend or a week or whatever it is, uh, then it's going to be valuable because you can use it for the rest of your life so uh, one little thing can scale and scale and scale and scale so uh, yeah good, good to find anyone that you can resonate with to grow from absolutely now i mean you've been a pioneer in the pharmaceutical industry in the health and wellness industry and you're almost taking Airbnb out of business with your immersion wellness uh, programs. And um, obviously Shark Tank has, you know, had a taste of the Nathan Bowles. What's next? What can people expect from you uh, moving forward? Look, the, the business side of it is just where my passion's at. It growing any sort of business is is fun. That's what I'll do. So, at this stage, we will continue to grow immersion to get it across uh, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, and Thailand. They're the first three destinations that we'll we're focusing on. Uh, Tommy Sugo, we're recruiting more team members to uh, run licenses around Australia. Uh, with our with our pastor and growing partnerships with with other business owners passionate business owners again we we can't go for we don't want just that mediocrity it, it's got to be people that are really really passionate that are really driven that want to make a difference and an impact in their world and in others world so we're really keen on partnering with those sort of businesses and and having fun. We just have, you know, just take the take the Mickey out of each other all day and have have fun in our, our business and make each other laugh because yeah, don't have a social life, but just have a businesses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I think of all the things that you have mentioned, um, one thing that really sticks with me is don't be don't be mediocre, all right? Because mm -hmm. a lot of people just get things, you know, just push things across the line as long as it's half done or half baked. But the world has changed. I mean, we're creating for a world mm -hmm. that no longer exists. It's just so much greatness to be shared out there so i can't thank you enough man for the time that you spent with me on the call today i mean awesome. you know Pleasure. your life your life story and your experience have so much value for those that are listening to it i, I actually think you owe us a book <laughs> yeah. 
who knows that might be on the cards <laughs> absolutely well thank you so much yeah. nathan for sharing your incredible journey and insights with us today and for our viewers if you actually enjoyed this particular episode make sure you re-watch it as there's a wealth of knowledge to unpack and if you are a wellness consultant or a wellness practitioner why don't you reach out to nathan as he has kindly offered to actually have a look at your business and see if you are creating a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Um, otherwise, what's the whole point in you uh, going through the motions of, um, you know, creating something that is not going to be paying off in the end? And while you're at it, don't forget that you heard it first on the Online Prosperity Show, which means um, you, if you like what we're doing, just kindly subscribe for more inspiring interviews and actionable business strategies like the ones we just heard from Nathan Bows. Now, until next time, keep thriving and stay prosperous. Bye for now.